Hello, uh, can you see my screen properly? Uh, wait, so it's loading. It's loading. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, these are the sample questions, right? These are the sample questions by uh, the book, uh, which is published in the book, hmm? sample question styles. So anyway, uh, they, Uh, they expect us to uh, cover these areas basically. That's why I just wanted to highlight this. Uh, and uh, basically, they want to cover uh, this uh, basic theories related to this chapter, which is internet working, no networking, and internet. And uh, so we have discussed few of these. And uh, what is PSTN? What is PSTN? Hello. Hello. Setas, can you hear me or not? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me or cannot? Yes, sir. Yeah, you can hear me. What, what is... Uh, the term PSTN. Uh, yeah. yeah. What is the meaning of term PSTN? Hello. I can't say, but there is a delay in what I say. Uh, it's about right. a five second delay. Yeah, yeah, it seems. Okay. Uh, so, what is known as PSTN? Public. So PSTN means we have discussed this actually yesterday. We have discussed this PSTN means public switch telephone network. So this one. So we discuss about two things when we discuss about uh, TCP. One is circuit switching. The second one is packet switching. In circuit switching, you have PSTN, public switched telephone network. That is the existing current telephone infrastructure, which is you can call maybe a traditional telephone infrastructure, which has circuit switching. Circuit switching means you have to establish a circuit before you start the call. After establishing the circuit, anyone else cannot connect to the particular circuit. So after, uh, that after completing the call only, others can connect. So that is the traditional telephone structure, PST and public switch telephone network. And we do internet communication using traditional telephone uh, structure. For an example, internet facilities like ADSL, ADSL, asymmetric digital subscriber line. We get that through uh, traditional telephone networks because a portion of the bandwidth, part of the bandwidth is reserved for, uh, part of the bandwidth is reserved for data as well. But it is, uh, it is based on uh, the telephone line is fully based on uh, circuit switching, right? But if you are using a data network, it is packet switching. Okay, now you know that uh, basically when it comes to, yeah, just go back to the syllabus and they have asked about what is PSTN and uh, the wireless and wired technologies. We have discussed that yesterday. And so then uh, we they have asked about IP addresses here, 32 bit, the binary codes, you have to convert uh, if IP address is given. So converting how binary is converted, I, I have explained this yesterday. And uh, they have asked about domain name system and uh, then IP version 4 address. Yes, I have explained this. What is IP version 4 address and what, what is net ID and host ID? Let's discuss that today. And CIDR notation, I ask you to look into CIDR. Uh, that means uh, classless interdomain routing classless interdomain routing and here they are asking about class full or uh, class abc the second uh, this one they are asking about classless so we have to discuss this part as well today we'll discuss more about this uh, class abc networks uh, abcde and classless interdomain routing right let's discuss about that part i think with that the particular theory part is 
completed, then we have to move to practicals where they expect you to learn uh, JavaScript here, JavaScript, as well as for server side, they expect you to learn PHP. I think uh, they have given here PHP for server side processing and JavaScript for client side processing, right? Uh, then uh, we learned about this uh, twisted pair coaxial cable, fiber optics and wireless media like uh, wireless actually we didn't mention, but uh, we have few radio, uh, microwave and infrared. So, and this part actually we didn't discuss what are the factors affecting uh, communication or transmission impairments that we discussed today, right? Okay. And uh, then, uh, Okay, the ISP and this one we have discussed, domain name system. Let's finish with these topics. Today we will be discussing, uh, I'll, I'll list the topics. So, how to connect internet. And then we will discuss about IPv4, uh, IPv4 uh, classes. classes as well as CIDR classless interdomain routing and DNS domain name system um, as well as so we'll be discussing about transmission impairments so the transmission impairments Impairments means the uh, meaning is uh, like uh, limitations or so you can say injuries, limitations, issues, disruptions, what can be happen in transmission. And uh, before that, we will be discussing wireless technologies, right, to cover this part. Wireless technologies transmission impairments like bandwidth attenuation interference and other repeating issues and all. And then about, uh, right, um, services of the internet. So we will discuss about services of the internet. As well, and then so IPv6 was IPv4, DNS. So I think you have learned, you have already learned the HTML part, right? So you have already learned HTML, no? Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully you can remember the stuff learned in HTML because I'm going to use HTML, but I'm not going to teach HTML. But in case, if you cannot remember anything about HTML, then I can uh, explain that as well, but uh -huh. that will take some time, right? You have to understand that. So uh, do you need me to, uh, do you want me to explain HTML as well? Or you can remember sure. HTML. Hello? Maybe a quick recap of it. Sorry? A quick re recap, maybe, sir. A uh, quick recap, okay, can do. Right, okay, uh, so let's start uh, how to connect internet, basically. To connect internet, we need few things. The first thing is you need uh, uh, internet capable equipment. Earlier days, this was like computer, but uh, nowadays internet can be connected to in anything. So internet capable or internet enabled. I, I'll change this as enabled. In internet enabled equipment plus um, internet service related software. Then uh, service related software and not just, you need a connection from internet service provider, active connection from 
internet service provider why i uh, why i'm telling active connection because you need to maintain that connection active status by paying the uh, usage fee or uh, maybe time based fee you have to make it active and that is what you need you need internet enabled equipment internet related software plus active connection from isp internet enabled equipment means it can be watch it can be a mobile phone smart smartphone pda laptop desktop or whatever or internet of things anything internet enabled camera so with internet mm -hmm. uh, and uh, basically you need uh, inside the particular device you need modulator demodulator or modem or uh, routing uh, equipment basically in, inside the router also you have modulation facilities modulation means since you are sending signals to far away uh, places using analog signals so that's how you transmit so you can use analog signals as a carrier signal to transmit data to far away places because you uh, for an example radio signals radio signals are high frequency signals where it, it travels like uh, kilometers so but you know the voice signal it is not a high frequency signal it's between no. 20 to 20000 hertz that is the human uh, hearable voice range but uh, that is also not a powerful one therefore you can't talk uh, from here to candy that is not possible but uh, if you are using a radio signal or satellite related uh, radio frequency so then you can transmit your data to far away places anyway that is analog signal so since that is analog signal what you have to do is you have to modulate your signal your you have to modulate it with your uh, data, uh, data, data or data signal, and then send it to uh, the destination. You call that. Uh, there are three things to modulate. This is extra. So again, this is extra thing. So there are three techniques to modulate. Basically, more than three techniques are available, but basically you have ASK, uh, FSK, and PSK. If it is for digital uh, data and signals you have three method that is ASK, FSK and PSK for analog data you have AM, uh, PM and FM I think you have already uh, so you have done this already in your lower grades so what is ASK, PSK and FSK yes I'm not uh... I didn't hear this before, sir. You didn't hear this before. Oh. So, yeah. have you heard of AM, PM, and FM? Um, could you define it? Uh, FM, you know, FM channels, Hulu FM, Sun FM. Oh, like radio. So, frequency modulation. Yeah. Frequency that modulation, this is actually a very a basic thing. Modulation means you have a carrier signal. So, let me show using an image. AM, FM, PM, AM, FM, PM. So here you can see amplitude modulation means you take high frequency wave and uh, actually shape it according to the amplitude of your data, your data signal or your uh, source or uh, the signal that you want to send. The source will be anyway, source will be or oh, yeah. the carrier signal will be high frequency signal because high frequency signals can travel long distance then uh, if you have like low frequency signal like this let's say low frequency signal is something like this then according to this low frequency signal you change the shape of high frequency signal so this is called a you are changing amplitude in uh, pace in uh, pm or pace modulation you change the angle or the you change the degree of the signal based on based on the uh, okay for an example think about okay this is your input uh, modulation signal input signal sorry so according to this input signal you can see this am signal is generated this is the high frequency carrier signal this yeah. high frequency carrier signal is changed according to this input yeah so then you call am if pace or the degree uh, of the particular signal if pace or the degree of the particular signal is changed according to input signal then you call uh, pace modulation if frequency is changed 
without changing the degree or the angle, if frequency is changed, if frequency is changed, you call FM. So what is more reliable? It's AM low. is not reliable. Why? AM, you are yeah. lowering the amplitude. When you lower in the amplitude, you know, in the environment, there's something called noise. Yeah. So even when I'm talking to you and you are talking to me, you can hear some other noises, no? Maybe sounds of, uh, maybe sounds of vehicles, sound of air conditioner, maybe sound of other people or microphone sound, whatever. Some noises, additional unwanted sounds are there in the environment. If my voice is, for an example, think think as an example, if my voice is uh, lower than the particular noise, then you will hear the noise, not the voice, no? So I'm talking to you. Uh, assume that uh, vehicle is passing by and uh, it uh, maybe it sounds is very noisy, heavy sound. Then whatever I'm talking to you, you cannot hear because of that noise. The unwanted signals are called noise. So, but in AM, what's the problem? AM channels, I think you have heard of in radio also, you can tune for AM channels, but you can hear a sound like so, likewise, there, there's an additional uh, like wave-like sound coming from that AM. That is not reliable. Mm -hmm. But FM, you are not changing, since you are not changing uh, the power of the signal, power remains or the amplitude remains. Only thing is frequency is changing. So FM and PEM are much reliable than AM because you are not changing the amplitude. Right. But when you are using a digital signal, the same modulation techniques applied, but digital signals you call ASK, PSK, and FSK. ASK, PSK, and FSK. That is for digital signals. Okay. Here you have a digital signal. Here you are using high frequency signal. High frequency signal is shaped according to the digital signal. This is the easiest way. This is called amplitude shift keying. ASK, amplitude shift keying. And frequency shift keying is uh, according to the digital signal, you are changing the, changing the high frequency analog signal and its frequency. Here, low frequency, once high frequency. Zero's low frequency, once high frequency. Zero's low frequency, then you call frequency shift keying. Similar to the analog one, but you are using a digital input this time. So pace or the angle or the degree of the signal is changing here. It's going this direction. But when you meet a one, it will invert. Again, one, it will invert. If it is zero, it's passed by. But if it is one, it will invert. Again, zeros go as usual. You got one, then you change the pace. When you get one, you change the pace. Here two ones, that's why you have changed the pace two times. Here one, one. You meet first one, change the pace. Another one, change the pace. And here you got one, change the pace. You got one, change the pace. So this is called phase shift key. So both can be applied and you can send more data in phase shift key, PSK. Because PSK can be uh, advanced by using Q, P, S, K, uh, 4, P, uh, sorry, then 8, P, S, K and 16 PSK, that means angle can be changed, uh, change in like, change in uh, 180 degrees. You have altogether 360 degrees. So you can uh, maximum, yoga, you can theoretically go for 360 changes since you have 360 degrees in a circle. Isn't that so? You have 360 degrees in a circle, therefore you can have 360 changes. Practically or using hardware, that is not possible to recognize all 360. But in watch, in a clock, you have 12, no? In a clock, you have 12 changes, 12 different positions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 12. That's how you read time. That 12 is again divided to 60. 60 can also be recognized, but if 60 is further divided, then it is difficult to recognize, no? Yeah. Hmm. Then, uh, but uh, these are some practical uh, things. Here you can see QPSK, you have four angles, four degrees. 8PSK, you have eight uh, angles. 16PSK, you have 16 angles. Okay, 16 angles with 16. So different uh, here, different power and a different radius. So here also uh, 32 uh, APSK. 
So this is not just PSK, APSK. Why you are changing amplitude and phase both? Here, low amplitude, high amplitude. Low amplitude, high amplitude. These are the variations. If there are four PSK, you have 0, 0, 1 channel, 0, 1, another phase, 1, 1, another phase, 1, 0, another phase. Here in 8 PSK, you have eight, eight such combinations. 16 PSK, 16 APSK actually. Why you are changing amplitude and phase both. Here you have three amplitude levels. 32 APSK, you have three amplitude levels and phases. So likewise, you have advanced technologies. This is not relevant to internet. I just, this is networking. But why I'm explaining this because, so if you want to send signals to far away places, you have to use a, a high frequency analog signal. When you are using high frequency analog signal, you can send data to far away places. And in digital transmission, you are using AM, ASK, PSK, FSK. In analog transmission, you are using AM, PM, FM, right? So just uh, some additional thing other than what is there in your syllabus or the summary. Okay, let's move. Right, anyway, to connect internet, you need ISP and you need modem or router. Router with modem facilities, like router inside that you have, inside you have modem. Why modem is always required? Even in your mobile phone, you have modem. So earlier days, there was a separate one, separate device called modem, but Nowadays, it is embedded or included to the uh, to net most most of the networking devices and interfaces. Why modem? Because you are sending signals as uh, analog signals. From analog signals, you convert that to digital uh, signals and read. That's why you need uh, analog to digital and digital to analog conversion. Therefore, you need modulator, demodulator, which is the short term is modem. Modulator, demodulator, short term is modem. Then you need internet service related software. That means uh, if you're accessing websites, you need web based of web accessing software like a web browser, Firefox, Google Chrome, Opera, Safari. Likewise, you need a web browser. If you're accessing emails only, sometimes you might get internet. You are not accessing web, you are accessing emails only. That can happen. So then you need, you need email client. Email client like Eudora, Thunderbird, Outlook Express. Eudora, Thunderbird, Outlook Express. That is the software which is related to email. Assume that you get internet. Still, WhatsApp and Viber, those are also internet services, no? WhatsApp and Viber. WhatsApp is the, you are, we are not accessing WhatsApp as a website, basically. But there's a web interface as well. But normally, we access as, app, as an app or application. For that also, we need internet. Then if you need, uh, okay, uh, okay uh, if you need like internet phone, internet telephone facility, or if you need uh, uh, WhatsApp, IP calls, or um, maybe Viber calls, uh, we can configure particular software uh, in our machine. Anyway, internet related software is required because that's uh, then only you can access the particular service. Okay, then uh, active connection from ISP that is also needed. What is, who is ISP? ISP means internet service provider. So you need uh, service from ISP. Okay, if you have these things, you can access the internet. Uh, let's say I got ISP connection from SLT or some other people. And then I have downloaded and installed Firefox in my, uh, in my computer. Uh, and I have the modem or routing facility or any way modem facility inside the router. Or oh, whatever data connection or any way mobile phone is itself is working as a modem. Uh, if you are sharing data uh, through mobile, mobile phone and internet enabled equipment like mobile phone, laptop, then you can access internet. Okay, uh, then uh, these are some additional things that we okay. learned. ASK, FSK and PSK, MFM and PM. Uh, then uh, there's something called wavelength uh, one, but that is not really famous. That's why I discussed the major. Then uh, services of the internet. What are the services of the internet? The main service is Number one service, I think you can name it. What is the number one service in the internet? Mm, information seeking. Information is not a service. Basically. Information you can get from anything. No? 
even from whatsapp nowadays you can receive information through viber to new news alerts uh, through uh, messenger or through email also you get information so that is not us not directly oh. a that is what you can do so, the web websites and all that yeah. it is number one is www which uh, names which terms as www it is called worldwide web worldwide web that is the number one service anything and everything right. basically anything you can access through web pages nowadays even whatsapp you can go to whatsapp web and access likewise you have web facilities for many services not everything but most of the things can be accessed through web that's why number one service and the second email uh, then instant messengers instant messengers means whatsapp viber emo and all those are called instant messengers and news groups initially there was a separate initially there was a uh, nowadays also it's there separate service called news groups where you have to go and subscribe for particular news group and they will, then you will get updates time to time but nowadays this news group facility is integrated with many services now you can subscribe for to many things no? so you can subscribe uh, for websites you can subscribe for rss mm -hmm. uh, you can get as, as rss feeds you can go and subscribe in youtube uh, then you will get alerts so anyway news sms also you can subscribe so that is the original concept was news groups so news groups means you subscribe or you join then you oh. will get alerts right similar to that uh, there's something called there's a service called rss or rich site summary or real simple syndication where you go and add the particular rss service to your site your site will be automatically updated when the particular site is updated for an example let me show one example if you go to other there dot com slash r s s dot p h p other there are not lk i'm not sure lk slash r s s dot p h p www yeah here it's asking uh, basically some websites uh, some websites are displaying this but some are asking to download anyway you can see there's a file called rss.php uh, you can download but some websites will display this directly let me uh, web browsers let me try this with google chrome in google chrome let's paste the same thing and you can see it will be uh, displayed in the web browser so this is uh, this is like in xml format you can see it is in xml format xml extent extensible markup language format and here you can see uh, police warn again providing false information documents this was uh, synced uh, or published uh, november 6 949 47 second 949 p.m and this is the latest likewise if you refresh this after some maybe 10 minutes you will get new news okay. right. so when you link this rss to your channel or your website you can link this you can link this rss to your website or your iot application uh, or maybe your news system whatever then when these people when these people are updating this uh, rss real simple syndication rss or we call real simple syndication or rich site summary rich site summary or real simple syndication when they update so we will automatically get information that is also a service of internet right we don't need to uh, go and read their site and update it in our site it will be automatically added to our uh, page this web syndication right okay uh okay. that is also a service not just that you have something called remote access remote access means you can go and uh, access things without physically being in the particular particular location so what do you mean by, by that for an example assume that you have an ac 
you want to access the ac uh, you want to turn on ac or like uh, change the temperature of ac you are not going to climb uh, to up to ac by using a ladder and change that so what do you do you are using remote control physically you don't want to go there and you don't want to go there and update that so similar to that you can use remote controller to change the channel of tv so that is a uh, home appliance anyway a small application so not like that you can access through internet you can access anywhere in the world not just anywhere in the world even space station you can access even um, some other area some sometimes planets even uh, if it is connected right you can access anywhere uh, remotely without physically going there for an example you know you know that uh, people like nasa organizations like nasa they are sending different uh, satellites maybe cameras to space and what they really do they will remote access and uh, get the photographs because no one to carry camera and take photographs and come back so basically you send a uh, kind of uh, equipment or robots with them and that will be remote accessed by nasa that's how it really happen so you can also try remote access through web so just uh, try this url in url you can also try this later in url view slash index dot s h t m l <coughs> just uh, <coughs> sorry just search this in the internet in uh, google in url colon without any space uh, forward slash view uh, forward slash index dot s h t m l then search then you will get uh, different different uh, ip addresses and results here from some ip addresses just access those uh, links just uh, just access those links and see uh, sometimes you might be able to, if you are lucky you can see public remote cameras which is connected to internet these cameras are directly connected to internet and these cameras here you can see one wow. this is a uh, born uh, home airport the time uh, date is uh, 11 6 that means today time is 6 54 am in the morning If you play this, mm -hmm. so you can uh, some some cameras. If you are lucky enough, you will get some cameras which you can turn, which you can zoom. That camera will physically allow you to zoom, uh, maybe rotate, uh, pan or change the view. Likewise, that will be physically happen in the particular remote location. But uh, uh, we can. Control it from our side, but uh, no, most of the cameras you cannot control because of the security settings. But luckily, if you get some, maybe just go through the links because there you have like how many? This is a thousand three hundred big uh, result. So just you can uh, just see some some. This is another country. I don't know the country, but you can just search the country from IP because if you know the IP, what you can do is you can go to Google and ask IP uh, to location. There's a service called IP to location lookup, and in this lookup, uh, you can just paste the IP address. Right. In this lookup, you can paste the IP address and ask where is the camera location. So here, the my IP location it says Colombo because that is my ISP's location. Okay, that's not really my location. That's my ISP's location. Why? Because ISP is not giving me public address. they will give their public address uh, they will virtually share it with us therefore when someone is trying to locate us using our public ip so it uh, normally shows the isp uh, public ip then if if they want to really find who we are they have to go uh, for isp and get the information from isp because uh, they cannot give public addresses right. because you know this uh, these addresses are limited ip version 4 addresses are really limited how many addresses you can address from ip version 4 the maximum theoretical addresses you can generate from ip version 4 okay assume that so this this can this is like common example thousand huh? thousand mm -hmm. no so so if you have like What's one bit so if you have one bit how many addresses two addresses 
If you got two thousand, sir. Sorry. I didn't. I didn't say anything, sir. All right, you didn't. Okay, okay. So then, uh, if it is zero zero, so two bits. Zero 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 one one zero one one. Four addresses. If there are three bits, zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero and one one one. All together, eight addresses. One two three four five six seven eight. So if it is n bits, if it is n bit, that means two to the power n addresses. Two bits, two to the power two is four. Sorry, three bits, two to the power three is eight. If there are thirty-two bits, how many addresses? Two to the power. Hello. If there are thirty-two bits, Hello. yeah, two to the power thirty-two addresses. Because you know, one bit two address, two oh. bit four address, three bits eight addresses, and if it is thirty-two bit, it is two to the power thirty-two addresses, and this is the theoretical limitation of IP version four. This is the theoretical limitation of IP version four. Which is uh, two to the power ten means thousand. Two to the power twenty means uh, roughly thousand into thousand means one million. Two to the power three uh, thirty means roughly thousand into thousand into thousand. It is one billion. Then again, uh, to, uh, that is thirty two. Thirty one means two billion, four billion, roughly four billion. But you know that world population is more than that. There are four IP address version four can provide maximum theoretically four billion like uh, roughly four billion addresses. Right. So it's about thirty two. Let me take the calculator and show the real figure. So if you take, let's say, the scientific view, two to the power thirty two means so you can see this is the number. But uh, if you check uh, world population, that is more than that. So public addresses, which can provide using IP version three, uh, IP version four, is not enough. Therefore, they have increased the limitation in IP version six, IP v six. They are using how many bits? One hundred and thirty-two bits. Sorry, one hundred and twenty-eight bits. In IP version six address, they are using one hundred and twenty-eight bits. Which means it can address two to the power hundred and twenty-eight. So, which means this number three point four into ten to the power thirty-eight. Three point four into ten to the power thirty-eight. That means three point four roughly three point four or three four. After three four, you have thirty-seven zeros. So very big number. Uh, actually, that is universally enough. No, you can oh. even connect other planets, aliens. So likewise, so that is more than enough to access the addresses. That's why IP version six they have introduced IP, IP version six. Its range is high. IP version four range is very uh, narrow, not very narrow. It is uh, theoretically limited to four B. Practically, it's not even four billion because some IP addresses we cannot use. Some of the IP addresses are technically uh, unavailable. Some IP addresses are reserved for research purposes. Likewise, there are issues. Okay, now you know. Uh, I think you have the idea. And right, basically, let's move on. So, remote access is another service. So, I I have shown this using some few examples. Remote access. So you can just, uh, yeah, through Google we have access to remote cameras, and you can see the live uh, what's happening live in live. This is IP location service. Here by paste in the IP address, you can ask where the particular IP is. So then it says it's in Spain. It's in Spain. So right. likewise, you can see maybe you can access uh, your father's country. 
and just uh, check what's happening there because uh, if you know an IP address and of a remote camera, you can access this. Uh, or if you plug a remote camera to your house, it's only uh, cost you around 18,000, 20,000 rupees, Sri Lankan rupees. Then so you can just buy one and plug uh, connected to internet. Then anytime you can access uh, the remote camera from anywhere by typing the IP address assigned to that. But you have to buy a public address, a uh, public IP address. Public IP address is a costly one because uh, if you are buying from SLT, you have to pay additional 5,000 per month, as I remember, 5,000 rental per, per month to reserve the public IP. In addition to your regular internet cost, you have to pay 5,000 or 10,000 monthly to reserve that IP address. Okay, so that's it. Let's come back to our lesson, remote access. And not only that, you have some other services like uh, webcasting and podcasting. Anyway, all these things are called uh, video conferencing and video casting facilities, audio conferencing, video conferencing, that facilities are there in the internet. Uh, then uh, you have file transfer services and cloud application or application services. So these are few uses of internet. The top is www. Okay. Now here itself, I said the, the difference between IP version four and six. IP version four has 32 bit IP version 6 has how many bits 128 bits so the difference is so IP version 4 is represented using decimal IP version 6 is represented using hexadecimal IP version 4 uh, was IP version 6 so let me show an example Okay, so it was introduced in 1999, but it was not much popular. Still, we are using IP version 4. So this is the dotted decimal notation. You use a decimal number, but here in IP version 6, you are using hexadecimal. Hexadecimal digits, four digit, four digit, like each digit has four bits. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positions. Eight positions means eight into four, is 32 32 into because here four hexadecimal digits four hexadecimal digit means eight into four hexadecimal digit means totally 32 hexadecimal digits but one hexadecimal digit will contain four binary digits therefore 32 into 4 is 128 altogether 128 bits are there okay you have to remember that so that is about IP version. Uh, that is about IP version uh, six, which was deployed in 1999. So any questions? Any questions? No, sir. Right? Up to now, no questions, right? Okay. So let's continue the lesson then. Then uh, actually we you have to know about the IP version four classes. So there are five or four classes. Actually, you better write down this, or you can just uh, see what's happening there. These are the five classes used in IP version four addressing: class A, class B, class C, class D, and class E. Right. So let me explain how this is happening using uh, yeah. using MS Word, let's, let's explain how this is happening. So class A basically, in class A, you use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You know, that is the notation. We have discussed about this notation here. 8 by 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. eight. The first octet first octet or first eight bits pattern is this 
So it is start from zero, and it uh, the you can change up to you can change all these things, but you can't change this one. You can change these digits. You can't change this one. That means the last digit that you have the maximum one is this one. So what is the range? The minimum one is minimum theoretical one is this one. Practically, you have to go one. So what is the range then? Can you tell the range? Yes. If IP address is starting from one, then uh, up to what is the value of this? Yesterday we discussed what is the value of the, this. Yeah, we would have to calculate. Yeah, calculate. One plus two plus four plus eight plus sixteen plus uh, sixteen plus thirty two plus then hundred and thirty two plus sixty four. So what is the value? So you can calculate these things easily because you know this is. Two in binary. This is two. Yeah. And uh, this is one. This is four, no? One zero zero. <coughs> because uh, no ones, no yeah. twos. Uh, four. Then, four. then what is this? That is three. One one means yeah. one plus two is three. So what is this? This is eight. Then one 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 yes. is seven. One zero 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 is sixteen. Then one 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 is fifteen. So you know if you get one seven zeros is one hundred and twenty eight. One seven zeros it is one hundred and twenty eight. Why? This is zero. This is zero. 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 Here you have 128. No positional value is 128. No? Why? One, two, four, eight, sixteen, then 32, 64, 128. So if you get one here, it is 128. Then one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is 128. If so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is one hundred and twenty. So, so that's how you calculate easily. <coughs> Otherwise, you have to, you have to add one plus uh, one plus two is three. Three plus four is uh, seven. Seven plus eight is fifteen. Fifteen plus uh, sixteen is thirty-one. Thirty-one plus um, thirty-two is sixty-three. 63 plus 64 is 127. Anyway, 1 to 127, you get plus AIPs. 1 to 127. Okay, let's go to image again. Here you can see 1 to 127. <coughs> the first valid IP is 1001, and it can go up to 126, 255, 255, 254. Why is that? Why you can't go? Why you can't start from one point zero point zero point zero? Why you can't go up to one two six uh, two five five two five five two five five? Why? So they have given the valid range as one dot zero dot zero dot one two. One two six dot two five five dot two five five dot two five four. Why? Why you can't use? Why you cannot use? One dot zero dot zero dot zero. Why you cannot use? One two six dot two five five dot two five five dot two five five. Why? Any reason? 
so it's uh, the the one two six point two five five one is above the limit. No, no, it's between. Uh, so you know the limit is what limit is. This is the limit we discussed uh, last day. The limit is this. Theoretically, limit is this, and this is the limit. You can go up to two five five. It's All not two five six, no. But here they are telling, uh, sorry, here two five uh, two five four, right? Two five four. You can't uh, go up to two um, five five. Why? So you know the beginning address or the first address is reserved for network, or we call network IP or network ID. The last ID is reserved for broadcasting. That, that means if you want to send message to the entire network, you are using this one, broadcasting IP. Uh, this first or the very first one, the zeroth one is used for identifying the network. So the first valid host will be 1.0.0.1. Host means the computer. The first valid IP which, is, which can be given to a computer or computing device is 1001. The last valid IP you can give to the given to a device is 254. Why? Because if you use 255, it is the broadcasting IP. Okay. Understood? Yeah. Right. Yes. Sir. Okay. Uh, let me show one example. Let me show one example. Uh, oh, uh, are you using the computer? Are you using a computer? Uh, no, sir. You're not using. So uh, if I give you like... Uh, no, sir. I'm using my mobile phone. Mobile phone. Can you use your computer now? Is it possible? Hello? So the, uh, does, uh, there's a small problem with my laptop as of the moment, sir. So you can't use it. Right, okay. So then, uh, okay. Let me let me show this using uh, remote access. Uh, let's let's take small. Um, I'll I'll remotely show one computer, one Windows computer. So uh, just give me a few minutes. So okay. now time is eleven forty four a.m. So let's take like ten minutes break, right? So okay. after that, I'll connect back like eight eleven fifty uh, five. I'll connect and show you. What can we do? What can be done in uh, Windows PC and practical examples of this IP addressing? How to find the broadcast IP? How to find um, network IP? Uh, let's discuss that part: public IP and private IP. So let's take small break and come back. Right? Okay. Okay, uh, you can see this is my remote uh, remote uh, VPS, virtual private server, and that is uh, in Google, basically, Google Cloud, and I'm, I'm using this because I'm, I don't have Windows machine, I'm accessing my Google Cloud machine, and let me show you the steps. If right. you're using a Windows computer, just go to command line, right, just go to command line, and in the command line, what you can do is you can just... Uh, Type IP config to find out your IP, and you can see it's 10.128.0.43, and it's given in the hexadecimal format, which is IP version 6, and this is IP version 4 address. And you are given a subnet mask of uh, this and a default gateway as well, right? So, how to find? Uh, so, using this, you can uh, find the network IP and the broadcast. Let me show the steps. So if you are having this uh, IP address, subnet mask, you can find uh, broadcast IP and network IP. Let me show you the steps. I'm going to access Notepad, right? I'm going to access Notepad and I'm going to write this IP address, which is 10.128.128.0.23. Uh, and I'm going to write the same address in binary. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 8 means 1, 
zero 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 and then zero 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 twenty three mm, twenty three means uh, zero 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 then you have sixteen sixteen plus then you have seven sixteen plus seven is uh, this is one one plus two two uh, three three plus for seven, seven plus 16 uh, is 23. Okay, you are going to write the IP address in binary. Then uh, you are going to write the subnet mask. What is the subnet mask? Mask is 255-255-240-0. That is the subnet mask. You are going to write the same thing. So what is the subnet mask? So yeah, this one, the given this one. Uh, what is it? Sir? Yeah, 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 let me explain. That is used to find the network oh. and uh, broadcast IP. That mask is used to find the network and the broadcast IP. Oh. Right? Let me explain this. So let me write this in binary 11111111111111111 one, 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 mm -hmm. one, 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 240 means 1111 0000 means 0000000. Right? Now you have subnet mask as well as uh, the IP address. This is your IP. So you're going, I'm going to write this uh, again. IP is this one. And subnet mask, I'll write SM subnet mask. It is this one. Then you are going to end these two IPs. You are going to end this. And means apply and gate operation. To this so if you can remember the logic gate operation what is the result of n operation n operation results n gate will output one if and only if all inputs are one hope you can remember that n will output if, if it is one one and will output one if it is one 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 and will output one anyway if all, all inputs, inputs are one, one. Mm. if all inputs are one it will output one here, 0 and 1, it's 0. 0 and 1, 0, 0, 0. 1 and 1, 1. 0 and 1, 0. 1 and 1, 0. Here, this one, 1 and 1, 1. All others, 1, 0, 1, 0, all are 0. Here, all are 0. Yeah, this one also 0. Here, since all are zero, it is also zero. Then you get the decimal value of this. Decimal value is one zero one zero means ten. Then one seven zeros means hundred and twenty eight. All zeros mean zero. All zeros mean zero. This is called network IP of this network. Understood. Hello. Yes, sir. Understood. What is a network IP? Network IP is taken by and in IP address and subnet mask, you can find the network IP. Okay. Assume that there's another machine. That second machine is 10.128. Um, okay, there's another machine 10.128.14.5. Okay, what is the binary value of this one? Tell me the binary value. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Then? One to eight means? One, zero, zero. Is it? So one to eight would be uh, yeah. one, zero, 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 zero. zero, zero, zero. Then 14. 14, it would be 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 1, 1, 1, 0. Right, 1, 1, 1, 0. 5 means 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, then uh, same subnet mask. You apply the same subnet mask. Okay, then you find... With that, you can find 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 
after ending this and this one is one zero 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 this one is yeah all zeros this one is also all zeros now you can see the result is 10 dot 128 dot 0 dot 0 isn't that so the result is same ne? result is 10 dot here yeah. 128 dot here 0 dot 0 means right if you get this kind of result that means okay if you get this kind of result that means so these two computers yeah. right these two computers these two computers means the uh, computer with this ip computer with this ip and computer with this ip belongs to same network okay if you get ip address network ip if you get network ip as uh, this that means same results from the network ip then same network ip means both computers are in a single network understood that's the decision yes you always uh, use subnet mask to find out whether these computers are in the same network or different network. let, let me check an, again another one let me check another one uh, there's another ip that ip is 10.128 dot uh 30 dot two then you convert zero 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 one zero one zero one zero 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 thirty three means zero 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 one zero 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 one agree 32 plus 1, 33, then 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Then you are, uh, again this one, then you take this value and then you end it. When you end it, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, here 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay, then this one, 0, 0, this one you have 1 and 1, here 1, 1. 1 1 means 1 then again zeros here you have zero zeros yep yeah, zeros again this one is zero now you can see the network ip is 10.128 dot here this one uh, this one has changed 32 32 zero are we getting the same network ip or different one are we getting the same network IP of different one? This is different one, no? This is not the same one, no? This is 10.128.32.0. Means this computer is, it is in a different network. First two computers, this is, let's say, this is computer one, this is computer three, computer two, and this is computer tree. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Computer sir, one. I disconnected. Oh. Okay, anyway, I'll, I'll share you the recording so you can see that, that part. Anyway, just refer to the current one. Computer one, this IP. Computer two, this IP. So we discussed, we previously discussed these yeah. two belong to the same network. Agree? Yes. Right, okay. The third one, when we end this, when we end this one and this one, you got same 1010, zero, zero, same 128, but here you got one and one is one. Because of this change, right. you got 10.128.32.0. That is not the that is not the same network. So you can tell that computer one and two are in same network whereas computer three is in another network so computer one and two can be connected using a switch but if you want to connect computer three you need a router 
because it's in not it's not in same network you can't connect using switch direct switch or hub you can't connect you need to route or you you need kind of uh, mechanism to go between one network to another network going one network to another network means that is called routing you need to have router right so right. that's the idea right that's the idea of networking and what is broadcast ip broadcast ip is the maximum ip which can go for this network without change in this network without change in the maximum it can go is so let me write this here the maximum it can go is this one so you can't change this portion no because if you change this portion what will happen then network will change you can't change this one again network will change you can't change this one as well if you change this this one network will change but you can change these ips why the network will not change agree you can change this part no yes this is the maximum that you can do because that will not affect this network portion this call network portion subnet mask subnet mask when you take the subnet mask this portion is called network portion and this zero portion is called host portion so maximum ip that you can go without change in the network portion is this one so this ip address is 10. this ip address is tell me the ip address 10.128. yes this is 1111 is 15.255. So that is the broadcast IP of this network. Right. So what is the last value host then? Last valid host. Last valid host is 10.128.15.255. Is the last valid first? Okay. Right. Right. So that is what happening now. You know how IP address. Then, uh, then can you understand why subnet mask is used? Using subnet mask yes. only, you can identify the network IP. You can identify the broadcast IP. You can identify whether these computers are belongs to the same network or different networks. So that is using the subnet mask. Okay. Yes. So then, default gateway. You had something called default gateway. Default gateway is the point that you have connect. You are connected from that point only. You are going out. Gateway means it's the gate. Default gateway means that is the gate that you are going out. So that is your router's IP. Default gateway means your router's IP. That is where you are going out. you will connect the external network or you will connect the internet public network through this ip okay that is called default gateway okay this can be proxy this can be router yes. this can be uh, like uh, this can be another server uh, or domain name server or proxy server or router so any any mechanism that allow you to go out of this network this is the point that every each other computer all the computers in the network are connected to this central point and that is called default gateway okay now we have good idea technical idea about technical picture about the ip address i think i have done more than enough some are even not there in the syllabus but i have done more than enough i did calculations how to calculate all these things so you know in ccna examinations you will get these questions so go and see in the ccna cisco certification examination you have these kind of questions mathematics or calculation uh, so you can go there and see in the examination some right. of questions so that is very important okay then uh, let me come back to our windows machine but this is our google server so you can do the same thing if you need you can just have your own vps in google cloud they will give free uh, $300 credit free that is not credit actually it's free 
So you can use it for uh, various research purposes or creating VPSs and all. So, but you can't withdraw and uh, keep it in your pocket, huh? <laughs> right? That is just for the experiments using Google Cloud. You, they will give that. Right. right. You can link it and create a VPS. There's a separate video in my channel uh, for creating uh, that VPS using Google Cloud services. So it will be interesting because you can just, you have very fast internet connection here. So let me show you how fast this, unfortunately it's not loading. Uh, let, let me show this quickly, okay. Let me go to Google, right. Okay, then uh, let's say um, speed test. Um, let me go to speedtest.net and go and check the speed of this internet connection. Then you can see the internet connection speed is measured. Wow. Not just this, huh? not just this, wait, 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 because meter is not enough to measure that. <laughs> you can see it's going, going, going up wow. and you can see it is 628 Mbps. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, 628 Mbps. <coughs> we will never experience... This is the speed of the, the private server, sir. Yeah, it's in private server. 198 Mbps upload in uplink speed and downlink is uh, 628 wow. Mbps. You can see 628 Mbps means uh, it will take us uh, maybe less than one minute to download some movies. Less than one minute to download some yeah. movies. But unfortunately, it will be downloaded to your virtual server uh, where you have to again access that server using your mm -hmm. uh, poor connection. <laughs> Cannot help. So still, right. you can download the virtual server, that's true. But for watching, you have to use your own connection. Because from your virtual server to, uh, again, uh, you have to transfer this from your virtual server to your uh, computer. No? <laughs> In that case, right. there will be a bottleneck. But uh, I think that you are downloading something and editing and uploading. Uh, for that, VPS is better, no? Because you download yeah. the uh, this location and you do editing in VPS, then you upload. Then uh, that will be super faster. So, because you can download in seconds and edit and upload in seconds. And it will not consume your data as well. Your data will be consumed only for weaving the process. So that is the advantage uh -huh. anyway. Okay. Right. Now we know what's going on. And uh, let's let's go back to our normal network or our computer. So let's close the VP, VPS one. Okay, now we have our normal usual computer. And uh, right, then let me give the ranges. Now you, you can see why this range and what is the practical limitation of this last IP address and the first IP address because first one is network IP, the last one is broadcast IP. And I think now you can understand the maths behind this. And then the second second one, yeah. second class B. Class B IP is something like this. You have one zero, then six means the minimum you can go is one 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 the maximum you can go is sorry the minimum you can go is one zero 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 zero, zero. zero. the minimum uh, you can uh, the maximum you can go is this one that means range is range is uh, what is the range range will be one two eight two uh, this is 128 and this is 128 plus uh, 128 plus uh, 63 63 means 3 plus 1 and uh, 6 191 191 so that is the class B IP range 128 to 191 128 to 191 so basically 127 we are not using 
one two seven is that's they, there's a special purpose for one two seven one two seven base ips ips are used for local uh, or loopback ips ips are used for loopback ips loopback ips means you call your computer that means you call yourself uh, is called loopback for an example i can ping to ping one two seven zero zero one that is my own computer it gives me the results this is my own computer nothing else i'm calling myself i'm calling myself that is, is called yeah this is called loopback ip you can call yourself by using 127001 ip or any other ip related to 127 range which is loopback ip referring to yourself so basically it is 127001 that is the default one if you ping this it will start working because it will reply in that is your loopback ip and if you could remember uh, my uh, google ip uh, you can just ping to that as well so it was uh, this ip so you can also try if you want 34 71 235 that is my vps server ip and when i ping to that it responds so it is my google vps server ip so if you go and ask what is who's who owns this ip2 location you can see new news alerts are added now 1050 another news alert is added so that's what i say so anyway uh, let's go to ip2 location and i'm asking of the location of <coughs> google ip which was this one i'm asking the location find and it says yeah uh, its organization is google country is united status and this ip is related uh, uh, belongs to google google cloud right okay now you know in and out about ips and ip ranges and how these ip ranges affects you so this this is 128191 so same range i think you better write down this one this is very important this is how IP class concept happens. Better write down this one or just take a print screen or screenshot. If you're using a mobile phone, take a print uh, screenshot. So very important. And this is how IP addresses are used. But D and E we are not using. D and E we are not using. Those are used for research purposes, basically. D and E used for research and multicasting purposes research and multicasting purposes broadcast means sending messages to everyone multicast means sending messages to selected people unicast means sending messages to one person unicast sending messages to one person multicast sending messages to selected people broadcast sending messages to all all of them right now i think you know class a class b class c right. class d and e ips so based on these classes based on these classes there are some other limitations for an example so this this different classes are having different uh, what you call different classes are having different subnet masks right different subnet masks basically so here Class B IP, you have 16. Uh, class B IP, you have 16 bits for network and 16 bits for hosts. In class C IP, you have 24 bits for uh, host and 24, sorry, 24 bits for network and 8 bits for hosts. Okay, based on that, you can just find uh, how many hosts, how many, uh, uh, how many hosts, how many. Uh, sorry how many hosts and how many networks are there that can also be calculated for an example uh, assume that there's a class uh, c1 let me give you an example class c ip 
192.168.10.5 is a class C IP where you will get give class C subnet mark 255. This is the default one 255. 255.0. And okay, if this is the IP and subnet mask, what is the network IP? Can you tell me quickly what is network IP? of this network if 255 255 means what how many ones are there one 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 again two five five one 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 two five five one 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 zero so one nine two one nine two means one one zero 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 One two three four five six seven eight one six eight one two eight plus uh, one two eight plus thirty two means one sixty one sixty plus eight one six eight just calculator don't uh, trust me just yeah. calculate so if if there are errors let me know five means zero 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 one zero one then what is network IP? So when you uh, simply, you can remember the short way. If you end with 255, you will get the same result. No, if you end with 255 here, you will get the same result, no? That is 192. If you end with 255, yeah. you will get the same result. Here also 168. If you end with 255, you will get the same result. Here it will be 10 because one one here you will get one here will you will get one because of one one you will get one here also because of one one you'll get one same one zero one zero means ten if you end with zero you will get zero so that is the easiest way of calculating without chain without converting to that to binary you can easily calculate if you end with you two five five you will get same number if you end with zero you will get zero so network ip will be this one so what is the broadcast IP? What is the broadcast IP? Yes. Last valid IP, 192.168. Now you know this. What is the last valid IP without changing the network portion? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. So it seems that you are having internet issue. Okay, anyway, let me continue. Otherwise, uh, we'll affect the continuity of the program on the class. So let's continue. I'll uh, continue with uh, the video. Hello, are you in? Hello. Can you hear me now? Anyway, I'll, I'll continue with the class because you, then you can refer the video. I didn't. Uh, the broadcast IP or the last valid IP will be 10.255 because if you change this 10, if you change this 10 to 11, it will change the network. So therefore you have to keep 10 as it is. And by keeping 10 as it is the last, the maximum you can go is all ones, all ones. This is the last valid IP. That is the broadcast, sorry, that is broadcast IP. Last valid IP or the first valid IP, first IP will be 192.168.10.1 and last IP will be 192.168.10.254. So they can ask how many hosts? How many hosts? 
how many hosts hosts you can employ how many hosts means you can you take from one to two five four how many hosts include in one and two five four it is two five four hosts two five four hosts how many hosts two five four how to calculate this you calculate two to the power eight to the power 8 minus 2 2 to the power 8 minus 2 so the value will be 2 to the power 8 is 256 minus 2 is 254 why you are deducting 2 because you need one for uh, network ip and one for broadcast ip why it is 2 to the power 8? Because you have 8 bits. Here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 host bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 host bit. 8 host bit means combinations. How many machines? 2 to the power 8 machines. But for one uh, network IP, you need one. For broadcast IP, you need another one. So the value will be 254 hosts. So this is how, this is how you do the calculation. Okay, likewise, if you have the subnet mask and IP address, you can calculate many things. Understood? Yes, sir. Right. And uh, in CIDR, CIDR, you don't have limitations. This is called classless inter domain routing. You don't have any limitation. That means for an example, if you have IP address like this 192.168.10.5, the same IP address with, uh, let's say, with, in the short notation, you mention like with um, 26 bits subnet mask. 26 bits subnet mask. This is the short notation. That means you don't have limitation like class A, you had 24, class B, you had, uh, sorry, class A, you had 8 bits, class B, you had uh, 16, class C, you had uh, 24 bits. Likewise, you don't have limitation. You can mention any number of bits. 26 bits means you have to write subnet mask 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 23, 24, 25, 26. After that, hosts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, they are asking what is the subnet mask then? Subnet mask. Subnet mask is 255.255.255. .255 what is the value? 168, oh, sorry, 128 plus 64. 128 plus 64 means 192. 128 plus 64, which means 192. This is the subnet mask. Okay, what is uh, the network IP? What is the network IP? Yeah, network IP will be, so when you end this, what is the network IP? The first one you will get 192 because 255 and something is that something. 255 and something is something. Again, 255 and something, that is also something. Then you don't have 255, 192 and something. Then you have to find that 192 is this one, that something, the last eight digits, I'll make it XXX, eight. Then here, last 8 bit 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let's make this uh, over here. Then the size will be same. Just, it seems there's additional bit here. Now, first tree we have taken, 192. 
one eight is not one eight six one six eight two five five and this one is one six eight ten and two five five is ten so one nine two plus five we don't know we are going to calculate this and this one so one zero is zero one zero is zero 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 that means it's zero so this is the network ip then they ask in broadcast in ip in cidr notation cidr notation is nothing you will be given how many bits how many bits means 8 8 8 plus additional 2 why 8 plus 8 is 16 16 plus 8 is 24 24 4 plus 2 is 26 it's given when it is given you have to do the same thing you did in previous one Okay, then 192.168.10.0 is the network IP. What is the broadcast IP? Broadcast IP means the last valid one, last valid host. Last valid host will be, you have to keep 192 as it is. 168, you can't change, you have to keep as it is. 10, you have to keep as it is because it is belong to the network portion still. So this is belongs to the network portion and this two also belongs to the network portion. Not only that, this two is also belongs to the network portion. So you have, you can't change that. You can't change that means the network portion, you can see it is for this one, 101 network portion was 00. zero. That means you can't see change these two zeros. If you change these two zeros, it will go to another network. Then what you can change is these six bits. Because after this, I'll, I'll highlight this. I'll highlight this in green color. These two also in green color. You can't change that. Because it's belong to the network portion here. Network portion. This part you can change. The part that right. you can change is 1, 6. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Means 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus uh, 4 is 7. 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 plus 16 is 31. 31 plus 32 is 63. So broadcast IP is 192.168.10.63 is broadcast IP. That is the last IP that you can, uh, so that is the last IP is broadcast IP. So what is, what is the last valid host? Last valid host will be 192.168.10.62 right that is the last valid host then they can ask something like this if this is a class uh, c network if this is a class c network means class c means you have these uh, three positions fixed these three positions fixed that is class c class b means these two positions fixed. Class A means this position fixed. If this is class C, that means this position fixed. How many subnetworks that you can create? How many subnetworks? How many subnetworks you can create? How many subnetworks you can create? You have two bits here for subnetworks. So 0, 0 is one subnet. 0, 1 is another one. 1, 0 is another one. One one is another one. You can create four subnets. Class C. So all four subnets are belongs to class C. But how many networks you can create all together? By changing these two bits, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, you can create four subnets in class C. How many networks? How many networks means all together you have 26 bits here belongs to the network position you have here to here 26 bits that is given here you have 26 bits for network portion that means you can create 2 to the power 26 2 to the power 26 networks networks can be created to the power 26 networks theoretically theoretically to the power 26 network but you know that 0.0, .0 is not a valid network 
right? Zero dot zero one is not a valid zero dot zero dot zero dot that is not a valid network. And you can't take two five five dot two five five dot two five five last two also you can't take. So that therefore, practically it is to the power twenty six minus two networks can be created, but that that you don't want. Okay, these are the number of these are the ways that you will get questions. You have to answer all the questions. I think we have thoroughly discussed uh, the part subnet in networking, and uh, so basically we were starting discussing these things today: how to connect network and services of the internet, and then we discuss about IP address A and B. Then we have to discuss these two to finish today's lesson. These three. Yeah. Finish the today's lesson. So I'll I'll share the video similar to yesterday. I'll share the video with you. DNS simply yeah. it means domain name system. It is the system convert domain to IP and IP to domain. So as I said, here I have used the command called ping www.google.com. It gives me answer saying it is 216.58.199.164. This is similar to uh, your phone book. In your phone book, you go and ask, uh, maybe you have uh, saved your dad's number and you dial your daddy and you dial your father by selecting his name or selecting uh, the name father or dad, you dial it. But your phone book will automatically convert yeah. particular name to the number, no? Phone book has to convert yeah. name to number. That's why you are using phone book. Similar to that in domain name system, you dial for google.com, it will convert that to number. That's why DNS is there. You can use the same IP. I'll copy this IP. Go here. And I'll put HTTP colon double slash and I'll put this IP and press enter. It will redirect me to google.com. That means if you are dialing from the number, it will display the name. If you use the number, HTTP colon double slash, if you use the number, it will, convert, it will be converted to the domain name. That is the second part. Okay, that's how DNS work. Domain to IP and IP to domain. Why this is very important? Because you know, as human beings, we are very poor in remembering numbers. But machines, yeah, yeah machines, machines can cannot remember names. Machines are working with numbers, whereas people are working with names. Therefore, domain name is used to assist us to remember a name because you can't remember IP address of Google, you can't remember IP address of Facebook, you can't remember IP address of some other website or edX and or Pearson or Cambridge. You can't remember the IP address of those. So therefore, they have assigned a domain name. Mm -hmm. And domain name system is responsible to convert IP to domain and domain to IP. They use name record or C uh, or you call A records. Just go and search A record. They are using A records or domain C name or name records uh, to do this. And to exchange these domain names, routers use different protocols to remember these domain names and map these domain names to IP. Route, routers must keep a table. Routers must keep a table to uh, translate domain to IP and IP to domain. Then only when you put google.com, our router will first check whether it is there in its table, its DNS table. If it is not there, it will go and ask from ISP's DNS table. If it is still not there in this ISP's DNS server, it will go and ask from uh, higher level ISP's DNS server, top level DNS server. So if it is still there, uh, not there in the top level or root level DNS, then it will say that that domain cannot be uh, or domain not found, domain not found. But before that, it will search our router, our local router, our network router, ISP's uh, DNS records, and then higher level, top level ISP's DNS record and root level. Likewise, it will check the hierarchy, but if cannot be resolved, 
then it will give an error. So once assume that it is uh, found in top level DNS, then our ISP will duplicate that record in ISP's routing table. ISP's DNS table or DNS records will be updated. Then uh, when it is updated in ISP's DNS, our local network will up update its DNS according to ISP's DNS. Likewise, when it is found, it will be recorded in the DNS. Okay, that's how DNS works. Okay. Then the last one, last two one, uh, last, uh, sorry, last two topics, uh, wireless technologies. We have radio signals, actually we have already discussed this radio signals or radio frequencies are used to send data to kilometers, far away places. Then what about infrared? Infrared is a light signal, but it is very low frequency light where you cannot see, but animals can see this. Animals, even cameras can see this. Infrared is used in remotes, basically. Remote controllers. You know remote controller, it has a bulb, no? Yes. Remote control has a bulb. Can you see that bulb when it's turning on, turning off? Can you see that? Basically, your naked eye cannot see that. Your naked eye cannot see yeah. that. But if you watch through a camera, it will be recognized. Just put a camera, uh, just watch through mobile phone's camera. Then you can find uh, that bulb is lighting up. That's how you cha you uh, check whether that uh, battery enough or not. Power is uh, there or not. That's how you check. You can check with the camera. So similar to that, so infrared is used. Uh, since uh, infrared is recognized by cameras, it is used for night vision as well. Right. Used for night vision due to these usages. And uh, then you have some other short frequency waves like Bluetooth. Bluetooth is like 10 meter uh omnidirectional omnidirectional means it's going to all directions infrared is unidirectional it's going to one direction radio signal it's going omnidirectional bluetooth is also going omnidirectional it's going to it's going to all directions but it is like 10 meters then wi-fi it is also short frequency radio signal it's a uh, maximum 100 meters so here bluetooth it's maximum 20 or 10 meters 10 to 20 meters Omni directional, omni directional. Wi Fi is 100 meters, omni directional. Sorry. Omni directional. Uh, then uh, this one also, Wi Fi is uh, 100 meters omni directional. Then, uh, so these are the, uh, and uh, there's another thing microwave. Microwave is also unidirectional. Sorry, microwave is also unidirectional. It's not omnidirectional. It is basically used to transmit signals in between these GSM towers. You are using drums in GSM towers, microwave, how this travels between GSM towers. You can see these are, there are microwave drums in these GSM towers. So GSM is GSM antenna is not this. This in this you can see these are microwave drums. So these drums are uh, <coughs> drums are placed face to face. Even it is like kilometers away. So those are facing each other. This drum is facing another drum in some kilometers away. So uh, the, uh, the in between these drums, the signals are sent using microwave and satellite to uh, dish also it's sending using microwave it can travel like a uh, few kilometers but it can travel only single direction then how we get signals from these uh, towers because we are not going to point our phone uh, in the direction of the tower and uh, trying to find signal so when you get uh, when the signal is there uh, when signal is there in the this drum signal when send, signal is received to this drum. So what it does, it will transmit that to GSM antenna. And these are these these lines like things are GSM antennas. This GSM antennas can transmit this omnidirectionally. It can transmit in omnidirectional way. So this can transmit only unidirection, but when it is received, it will be decoded and transmit using this GSM antenna. 
these GSM antennas are capable of serving you omnidirectionally. Therefore, you will get the GSM signal. And that's the way that you access GSM and that's the way we are using GSM and microwave. Okay. Then, last, last topic, that is transmission impairments. I'll uh, keep it, uh, actually, I'll not explain much, but I'll keep it to you. I'll explain few things. In transmission, uh, we have some issues like attenuation, distortion, uh, and noise. These are some issues in the channels. You have attenuation. Attenuation means signal strength is lowering with the distance. For an example, I'm talking to you. Now you can hear me. But if I go away from this computer for few meters or few hundred meters, then you can't hear me. Why? Because when signal travels due to resistance, the signal power will be diminished. So that is called attenuation. So let me show in a chart or graph here. When signal travels far away places, the power of the signal will be lower with the distance. That is called attenuation. And what is noise? I can hear, uh, sorry, what is noise? Sorry. Noise in signal. Now also I can hear some noises from outside where the uh, vehicles are going here and there. Also I can hear noise from your microphone. Maybe someone is working over there. Noise in signal networking. Noise right. means some frequencies in the channel. So here, signal, yeah. this is signal. The original signal is mixed up with the noise and then only we can hear that. Here, this is a digital signal, but it, it mixed up with the noise and this is act, what is what actually happening. So here also, they have given good example. There's a signal, but there are, there are noises. Due to noises, this signal will be distorted. Distorted means the original shape of the signal will be damaged. There are some situations where you cannot recover the original signal. There are some situations where you cannot recover the original signal because of this distortion. Right Now you know these terms. Attenuation means lowering the power. Distortion means damage in the signal. Noise. So what are the other frequencies in the channel which, which is affecting distortion of the original signal? Therefore, you are using, in digital transmission, you are using repeaters. Repeaters will take the signal and amplify it and send in digital transmission. Right. In analog transmission, you know this. In analog transmission, you use amplifiers. This is in analog transmission. In analog transmission, you are using amplifiers. Right. Okay, with that, so you can just go and read the balance and all. With that, I'll stop for today. And you can watch this video later. Okay. If you miss anything.